Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you very much for joining me. Today is Tuesday, August 19th, 2025. Sad news to report, my uncle passed away. He died in his sleep of a heart attack. He was a veteran. He served during uh, the Cuban crisis. He flew uh, on spy planes during that time, um, you know, when they took pictures of what was going on there when Russia sent uh, missiles to Cuba. Yeah, he served um, and retired from the Navy. He'll be greatly missed. I remember when I was a kid and he was on leave and his other brother was on leave and we all had dinner together sitting around my grandmother's kitchen table. And he spoke about how he, there was things he could not talk about, how, how they had a filing cabinet with top secret stuff and it was all labeled, you know, like, um, top top secret top secret he said top secret and then another uh, filing cabinet that said who gives a shit yep he will be greatly missed i believe he was either 82 or 83 years old yeah god bless you thank you for your service don his name was don R rest in peace and sending condolences to his widow bonnie and his children I also want to give a thank you shout out to Ginger who bought me 10 cups of coffee. God bless you. You're an angel in disguise. The auroras that were predicted to possibly happen across 15 states last night didn't happen, but maybe tonight. This here is an image from Vermont. Myself here in South Dakota, I had fog, so I couldn't see if there was anything anyways. Did the ACE satellite go down? I thought it came back online, but this is what it's showing. Yeah, they don't have any of the new data. This would be for the solar winds. Now remember that the KP index is important, with a higher KP indicating stronger aurora activity. A key ingredient of aurora activity is the BZ value of the interplanetary magnetic field, which can be easily viewed on spaceweatherlive.com which also is not working what's going on here's the current kp index yeah we're blind right now if that satellite went down i'm just gonna have to check again so when it's working you're ideally looking for a strong south bz which means it connects with the earth magnetosphere which points northward a strong Southward BZ can wreak havoc on the Earth's magnetic field and send particles raining down through the atmosphere along the magnetic field lines. When these particles collide with the atoms in the Earth's atmosphere, they release the light we see as auroras. If there is a strong southward BZ, your chances of seeing auroras increase significantly. So here on NOAA.gov, we have the forecast for the KP index last night yep nothing happened it was very disappointing um, the space station did uh, get some images but that even wasn't that good but tonight supposed to be up to a KP 5 supposedly and then on the 20th 4 KP 4 and then the 21st dropped down to KP 3 I also have a hazard um, indicator for satellites yeah this is what they're expecting to happen later today or maybe tomorrow actually yeah I've often said that solar winds do have an effect upon the earth and upon people also corona mass ejections do that too they create drag on low orbiting satellites such as Starlink so you could see possibly more Starlink satellites re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Here they have the three-day forecast. They're saying the greatest expected three-hour KP for August 19th through the 21st is KP5. And that would be, let's see, right here, late August 20th they're showing. Time-wise, well, 18 UT time, I believe. Isolated periods of a G1 minor geomagnetic storm are likely on the 19th and 20th due to negative polarity effects followed by the possible glancing blow from a CME 
that left the sun on August 17th. Radio blackouts reaching R1 levels were observed over the past 24 hours. The largest was August 19th at um, 4.39 Universal Time. And this is what they have for the uh, 21st. Actually, through the 21st from August 20th. Solar activity will be at very low to low levels with a slight chance for M-class flare due to the anticipated return of old active regions which are currently on the back side of the sun. Now if we do get a KP index of 5, this is what they're showing for the areas that possibly could see it. Maybe up there in Washington, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, Michigan, Maine, yeah let me bring this over a little bit so once again the different states that are supposed to see the auroras well they were seen in alaska last night idaho iowa maine michigan minnesota montana new hampshire new york north dakota oregon south dakota vermont i showed you the image from vermont Washington, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. Forecasters predict that there's going to be heavy cloud cover for much of the Midwest on Tuesday evening, uh, meaning sky watchers may have to hope for temporary clearing. Yeah, not going to have it. That's disappointing. Well, we just had an M-class solar flare, uh, M.11. I was going here to look for that one that occurred on the 17th, but um, yeah, right there, 1.13. So yeah, that'll increase our chances of um, auroras when it does impact the Earth. You know, with the Earth magnetic field getting weaker and weaker, yeah, these solar events are happening, you know, much more stronger than what they have in the past and it's all being done because mostly right now we have a coronal hole that is earth directed sending the uh, solar winds to earth so watch the skies thank you very much for watching please stay safe and i'll talk to you later god bless you bye